right, guys. So what we're looking at here, we've got the female reproductive system. We've got internal structures, but we also have external structures. Most people, when they think of things like STDs, they think of you know the, the internal things that can go on. But the problem is STDs can also be in this region as well. And you're looking at this and you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm looking at here, but if I'm Dr. Kelter and I am an OBGYN person, my patient is going to be laying down on the table with her legs up in the stirrups, the blanket's going to be covering her legs, I'm going to pull up the blanket, and as a physician, this is what I'm going to see. If I'm doing just a regular exam, like a pap smear, um, if I'm checking for STDs, um, if it's a um, pre- or postnatal appointment, if I'm delivering a baby, this is what I'm going to see. It's important, ladies, you know, to know the terminology here, that, you know, if something's ever wrong, you can call the, the nurse um, practitioner person um, and explain perhaps what the symptoms might be, okay? Then we're also going to go to the internal structures and talk about those as well. At the top of the paper, we've got the function up here. So let's take a moment and just identify the primary function and the things that the female system has to be able to do. So first of all, function is to reproduce. So to reproduce. But in addition to that, we need to know what or why or how. So the female has to be able to produce the hormones to reproduce. So to reproduce. How? We need to have hormones. We need the hormones to make the eggs, because a female is not born with eggs, she is born with simple round cells just like the guys. And then number three, she has to be able to house the developing uh, embryo or fetus. So house the fetus. Provide a place for the baby to grow, basically. So that's the direction we're moving in this morning. So now we get to this structure. This is called the vulva. And the vulva is all of the vulva. external parts. Everything that you can see from the outside. The first structure that we're going to identify is right here. This is called the mons pubis. This is a mound of fatty tissue. Fatty. And it's located just above or on the pubic bone area. Ladies, if you're not sure where this is located, um, pull your panty line in front or pull your swimsuit line in front and look down. That's the area right there. Um, pubic hair is going to grow in this area um, on some females. Um, the female might be a little self-conscious about the mons pubis. Maybe it's a little bit more fatty. Um, there's actually um, cosmetic surgeons who will do liposuction of this area if a female thinks it's a little too much. Okay. The next structure is right here and right here, and that's the labia majora. Labia means lips, and majora refers to the outer lips. Then, just tucked inside there are the labia minora.
Rhinora area, if it hangs too far, there's cosmetic surgeons who will trim up this area. Okay? Just a little factoid for you. Okay? No. No. The next structure is not an opening, so please draw it as a spot. And that is the clitoris. The clitoris is a sensory organ. The clitoris is that structure on the female that can become erect. So it can go from being like one millimeter to being a whole three or four milli uh, millimeters, millimeters, millimeters when it's stimulated. Okay. This is also the, one of the structures on the female that when it is stimulated, it may cause her to orgasm as a result. Okay. It's there. It's hidden. If you didn't know it's there, now you do. Okay? The next structure I'm going to draw is an open circle. This is the urethral opening. I'm learning so much. This is not the urethra. The urethra is the tube that carries the pee, the urine from the bladder to the outside of the body. This is just the opening. This is the pee hole. People seem to think, what if the tampon goes in there? What if the penis goes in there? What if... Mm, no, it can't because it's not its not flexible like the vaginal opening. Um, I would say the only thing that could go in there would be a catheter um, or bacteria. So people who get urinary tract infections, okay, that's where that bacteria goes. Guys, your urethral opening, your little pee hole at the end of the penis can also gather bacteria and you can get urinary tract infections as well. That's also where STDs can creep up. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, draw it as an opening, please.
her side there. <laughs> 